Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at force diagrams so we can answer questions from exercise 10a. So it's only a short video this one, it's only how to label force diagrams. Now if we have a block with a weight w, we'll obviously have an arrow pointing downwards with w on it for the weight and symmetrically we'll have an upward pointing arrow of r. Now let's just imagine you've dumped your shopping, this block here, onto a table. The R force here is the force that the table is having to provide backwards onto the object to keep the object from falling straight through the centre of that table. So it's effectively the table force of keeping the block stable. And if we're um, pulling the particle to the right by a force P, then we'll add in an arrow with a P on it. And if we have a rough table, then we have friction there. If we have a smooth table, there's no friction there. So the keywords for the friction part are smooth and rough, in which case you put either put an F or don't put an F. Let's have a little look at this question here. Um, the diagram shows the forces acting on a particle. Calculate the resultant force in part B is describe the motion of the particle. Let's have a look at the left to right forces first. Now we can see here that there's a 20 Newton force here and a 20 Newton force here. So if the particle starts from stationary, there is no movement in either direction. <coughs> For the up and down forces, we've got 30 going upwards and 10 going downwards. So that means that the 20 new there's 20 Newtons more force going upwards. So what we say here is the resultant force is 20 newtons upwards. Therefore, as we're providing more force going upwards than downwards, it's going to start to accelerate upwards. This brings in one of Newton's famous laws that F equals ma. The force, if, as we're providing 20 more newtons going upwards, 20 newtons here, it's going to be equal to however much mass we have times the acceleration. So if it is a two Newton block here, so if it is a two kilogram block here, we'd have acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. Okay, it's really important to note that resultant force in a particular direction will cause acceleration in that direction. If there is no resultant force, like we have left and right, then the particle could be stationary or it could be moving at a constant velocity. So if it's already drifting to the left by 10 meters per second, then we provide two forces, one to the left and one to the right, then it's just going to maintain that drifting to the right at 10 meters per second. All right then, so that's all we need to do for this video here. Have a go at a few of these force diagram questions here and work out what the resultant force is. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching.